There she is. Lacey is doing better. You might have seen in a recent video. I don't know where we are in the stream of videos now. We took a fecal of Lacey's to check on a worm load. And sure enough, she had some worms. It was making her a little bit thin and anemic. We could tell by the color on her under eyelid. And so we started treating our goats for worms. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about worms in general, as far as homesteading, dealing with these, what are parasites. We're gonna talk about what they are, what you have to think about, uh, concern yourself with, how to avoid them. We're gonna dive into that subject of worms. So let's, let's get into worms. Yeah. Worms, you worms. hear? If you've owned livestock for any amount of time, then you know the struggle is real. <laughs> worms. Uh, it's something that anybody who has animals for any amount of time has to deal with. And we're talking dogs, goats, sheep, cows, horses. Humans. I mean, every living thing. you have kids, thing. yeah. <laughs> so what is a worm? When we say worm, what are we talking about? It's a parasite, essentially. Something. You don't say. It is. It's so like talk showy of us. Parasite. Worms are parasites. Sometimes we say worms when we mean coccidia, even though it's not technically a worm. But they're parasites because they live off of their host, sucking blood and whatnot. But even though people may talk about like good bacteria that we have in our gut that the animals have, this is something different. This isn't beneficial to the animal at all. Now there's many different types of worms. There's gastrointestinal worms, there's <laughs> lung worms, there's a list of worms I have on my phone. <laughs> gastrointestinal worms, tapeworms, lung worms, liver worms, I feel like I'm playing head, shoulders, knees, and toe worms. There's meningeal brain worms. There's coccidia, which technically are single cell protozoa. And within those groups of worms, there's just hundreds more of worms. We could list worms all day, but that would be a disgusting video and that's not what we want to do. To avoid them or get rid of them or not have to deal with them so much on your homestead, first, like all enemies, if you want to destroy them, you have to understand them. So let's talk about the life cycle of worms. When you talk about goats and sheep, generally, unless they're newborn lamb or kid, they're going to have worms in them. They will have some worms to an extent. That newborn animal's mother and father and all the other animals in the herd around it will have some sort of worm load. And that's where the worm life cycle begins, in the belly of an animal who has worms. Thousands of years ago, the great ancestors of the livestock that you now own had adult worms inside their guts. And those adult worms then laid eggs in the digestive tract of those animals. Those animals then pooped out those eggs in the poop. And in that poop, those eggs hatch and the larvae crawls out. And if it's out in a pasture somewhere, it crawls out onto the grass and the weeds around it. Somewhere around four to five inches high, if it can reach that high up in the grass, can't get much higher. Along comes another animal eating in that pasture. They eat the larva, the larva get into the belly where they become adults, where they lay eggs, and the cycle has repeated years ago, the great great grand goat of our goats here, all the way to our day where our goats, as soon as they're born, those kids out in the field wind up eating some grass, getting some eggs in them, and the cycle continues. Now I know some of you are about to interrupt me and say, what about this parasite? It lives in a snail. And what about this parasite? It gets eaten by a cat. There are some differences, but the life cycle for the most part is like that. The parasite, eggs are in the belly of an animal, host hatches, comes an adult, lays egg, continues. And as long as your livestock are together with other livestock out on a pasture, there will be worms. And you'll have to deal with your livestock worms and trying to work together, finding a balance.
It does need to be a balance because you'll never get rid of all the worms. And you want your younger animals to have some exposure to worms so they can build up an immunity to them. So it's true, a couple worms inside your animal is not a real bad thing. It's actually good for a young animal to be exposed to some worms. You do not want to have a lot, a heavy worm load, as they say, in your animal. That's a very bad thing. Heavy worm load can lead to your animal not thriving. It can lose weight and not digest things properly. It can lead to anemia, blood loss, and eventually a heavy worm load can kill an animal, which we've experienced back in our early days of homesteading. We lost a few animals to worms. Yeah, it's not, not a nice death for them. It's not like a super peaceful death. happen so fast especially if you don't know the signs to look for you can go out one day feed your animal and the next hour you can go to check on it and see it laying there dead uh, so it's definitely something you want to prevent worms thrive when there's a lot of water or moisture this year in Pennsylvania it's been really wet so we're we're expecting to have a worm problem this year we're what do they say the best offense no the best defense is a good offense First off, try to buy the best livestock you can. And we don't mean necessarily like buy a sheep or goat that you're going to show. Buy them from breeders who have been working on parasite resistance. So many of the breeders are in this country and other countries have realized that parasites are a major problem and account for a lot of losses in their flocks. So they're working to develop a more parasite resistant animal. This doesn't mean you can say you're going to buy a certain breed. Say I'm going to buy a Nubian, I'm going to buy a Katahdin sheep and they're guaranteed to be parasite resistant because it's not. A breed may be known for being parasite resistant but if it isn't something that the breeder is actively selecting for, that parasite resistance can be lost. Talk to whoever you're buying your animal from and see what they do for parasite resistance in their flock. We have found that the easiest way to know if you're buying good quality livestock resistant to parasites is to follow particular lines and really the only way to do that is to buy registered livestock. They will cost you more but over the years of buying livestock we found we always had better results buying good quality registered livestock. We have bought the cheap Craigslist Go and you wind up putting so much time, money, effort into trying to keep them healthy or keep them alive even. The registered ones that you know based off a of history that other people have vouched for, uh, that this line is good, it's parasite resistant, uh, it's gonna save you a lot of worry. They're, they're done. <laughs> they're done with weeds, they wanna go in for the day. Weather's bad. If you're thinking, I can't afford fancy livestock, well, focus on raising feeder livestock. Buying young livestock that's already been wormed, if you manage those properly, you can usually get them to the butcher without worrying about worms, and you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on breeding stock. If you are buying breeding stock though, really, try to find some that have some parasite resistance. And if you're thinking, well, I can't afford good quality breeding stock, then you really can't afford to be breeding stock. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. Pun, or whatever they call that. Yeah. Okay. A second area that we focus on when we're trying to keep our animals worm load down is really focusing on their nutrition. We're making sure we're getting the right vitamins, the right minerals that they need to thrive. It will be different in every area. Ask a livestock breeder in your area how, what kind of minerals they're feeding their animals. Maybe you're selenium deficient. If you're not though, you don't wanna be giving them selenium if they don't need it. Find, talk to a reputable breeder in your area and find out how they're 
giving minerals and vitamins feed to their animals. I'm sun hatting it today. I'm Bob Ross afroing it today. <laughs> The third area that's good to pay attention to if you want to keep your worm load down on your animals, and we've learned this the hard way, is pasture management. We learned it the hard way because it seemed so easy. We had our movable fencing. We would move them when the grass got low. We ended up with a dead goat and a dead sheep because we weren't doing it the right way. Pasture management is something you can read books, thick, thick books about, and you can take college level courses. Certainly not something we're gonna sum up today in the two minutes we're gonna cover it in this video. But the general rule of thumb is that if you're moving your animals through a pasture quickly, a mimicking wild animals in nature, giving that pasture a long time to get rid of the worms that have been dropped on that pasture, you will decrease the worm load on your animals. What this means is you should be moving your animals every four to six days off of the area you've given them, making sure they don't mow it too low. That four to six day figure is funny because if you have a lot of animals in a little space, it could be an hour. Right, you know, it like... could, right. The worms stay low. The parasites and worms stay low on the grass. So if the animal's eating up high, they generally won't reach it. If you have a lot of animals in a very small space, you don't want them to mow lower than four inches. If they're getting down that low, they're in the danger zone. If you have less animals in a larger space, that four to six day figure is a safer figure. Then once you move them off of that pasture, that paddock, you shouldn't bring those livestock back there for about 60 days to even a year would be good. And even after a year, there can still be worms somewhere in that soil. There are very resistant, hardy worms out there. But this is just managing the worm load and keeping it lower. So what do you do if you're a homesteader who only has 10 acres, like what we had? Use different species in each area. Oh, because the parasites are generally species <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Species specific, <laughs> <laughs> which means worms that would thrive inside of a sheep won't inside of a cow. Worms that would thrive inside of a goat won't inside of a sheep. So rotate the animals on the pastures. Another thing you can do if you don't have like a thousand acres to pasture your animals on is keep them in confinement at different periods of the year. Back at our old homestead, we only had 10 acres. And every year we raised, you know, five to 10 pigs. That put a significant worm load on the property. So there were times where we kept our pigs on confinement, on concrete. We fed them on concrete. We brought them garden scraps and toys to play with so they still enjoyed their life. But by keeping and feeding them on the concrete, we reduced the worm load on our pigs. And we never once lost pigs to worms, even in only 10 acres. Remember though, they were all feeder pigs and we only had to keep them alive for five months. One of the reasons you see we haven't grown our herd of cows or, go or goats any larger than it is because we haven't got our pasture rotation set up yet. It's not an easy thing when you first move onto a property to figure out. So we're taking our time to do that. We've started kind of setting up our gates and everything. Hopefully in a week or so we'll have that set up and we'll have a video about how we did that. Yeah, it's a lot harder than you think it will be. You know, you think it's just a couple days and move them, a couple days and move them, a couple days, and then they get to start back all over again. But that's why the interspecies movement's good, getting the chickens on there, eating those little larvae up. If you're saying to yourself, you guys haven't moved your animals in over a month, if you only have one cow on a couple acres, you're not gonna get into too much problems. But we are working on improving our fences and uh, in an upcoming video, we'll show you that.
There's so much to think about when it comes to worms and livestock, and it can be overwhelming. Maybe watching this video you're like, that's it, I can never get livestock. I, I don't understand half this stuff. Don't worry. We've managed over the last seven years to not kill most of our livestock. You can do it too. There are animals which are easier to raise because they don't have such a susceptibility to parasites. If you're just getting started with livestock, you can't do easier than going with small chickens, turkeys. Fowl are generally more hardy when it comes to worms. I would say pigs, like a feeder pig is second. Feeder, easy. feeder pigs are great because you don't have them that long and you should buy them from a source that worms them in the beginning for you. So you are working with an animal that you can't mess up. You and, can't and practically you get, not mess yeah, up. And you get a really nice product at the end. Yeah. Of all the livestock, sheep are the worst when it comes to parasites because they will eat right down to the dirt and they'll poop in that same dirt that they're eating. Avoid making the mistake we made, which was let's mow our front yard with sheep. <laughs> it's not what you want to do with them. Behind sheep in difficulty are goats as far in as confinement, yeah. as far as parasites go. Cows are more parasite resistant, but they are larger animals, so they do require more input than say pigs would. Get your feet wet with something easier that you don't have to worry too much about and that isn't a huge expense as you learn with it. Don't do everything at once. We did it, it was awful. So what I would suggest to anybody who's looking into this is do your research. And once you're ready to make the jump into the more difficult livestock, like we said, look for good quality breeding stock. You will never feel bad about the decision to buy good quality. And if you can't afford good quality breeding stock, you can't afford to be breeding stock. I'm gonna make a new home study t-shirt out of that. That's just a good line. Now, even if you do all of these things right, you've got, a, you've got a good line, you're managing well, your animals are healthy, you could still have problems with worms. Which, you will still have problems. Right, which is what we're dealing with this year. And if you're wondering what we do when it's actually time to treat for worms, you'll find out in an upcoming video. So make sure you subscribe to our email list so you don't miss that video because YouTube doesn't share all our videos with everyone who watches these videos. But if you're on our email list, as soon as that video's out, the following Friday, I will let everybody on the list know and you'll be sure to get that video in your inbox along with all our other videos. Hi, baby. What do you think? Good. That was pretty good. Is fly time? This Quick is, disclaimer. This is, oh, okay, you want to do the disclaimer. I want to talk about how like everything we talked about was like a drop in the bucket as yeah, far as do worm. It. This video was kind of a drop in the bucket when you talk about parasite prevention. There's so many other things that can be included in this list. It would just be too long to do. We could do a video about every bullet point in this series and it could be an hour long. And don't forget, we are not vets and we don't play one on YouTube. So all the information that we've shared with you, we have some really good sources below. You can read the sources information, uh, the scientific data behind this stuff, and uh, learn about it for yourself because you should if you're thinking on getting good livestock. YouTube is a good general resource for these things, learning about livestock. But it does not replace having a close mentor to you because every area is different. We say this so many times, but get a mentor who lives in your area who has experience with the animal that you're interested in getting. Kazan, who runs the goat herd, has been a huge asset in letting us know about how she handles worms on this very property. So make sure to find your own mentors. We're just sharing with you a little bit of the stuff we've seen over the years, but don't take a YouTuber's final word as what you should do. Find your own good info.